Thank you. Praise the Lord. The young people have lost their voice. Praise the Lord. Looks like there's a great impact here this morning. Shout impact. Wonderfully made for excellence. You know, when some people say that they think, look at the world, look at the stars, look at the sun, look at the rivers, everything made for excellence. And look at the birds, look at the mammals, look at the sea, look at the ocean, look at the balance, chemical balance in everything everywhere made for excellence look at the galaxies look at the all the planets and look at the orbits and how everything moves around and look at all the circles wonderfully made for excellence take this blade of grass and put it under a microscope and see all the pattern see the symmetry see all the signs see how you compare this with that wonderfully made for excellence take two blades of grass and compare this with that look at the perfect pattern here look at the perfect pattern there compare them they're different they look the same to everyone and everyone is wonderfully made for excellence look at that arch and look at them and they all gather together and they build something how did they get the design how did they study architecture how did they bring everything together as if they were building the pyramid of long ago egypt wonderfully made for excellence and now look at you i said look at you i look at your head i look at all the cells there the neutrons the connections and I see how all the cells in the brain, actually, there are billions of them. And they're connected together, connected with the eyes, the ears, connected with the feeling, connected with the senses, connected with everything, and nothing misses out. And I can, I can differentiate the smell of an onion from that of the oil i can differentiate i don't know how or why i can tell the difference of the smell of the orange and uh, of the banana they're all different and i'm seeing uh, look at me when i want to stand i stand when i want to run i run and when i want to bend down pick anything i bend down and pick that thing and when i want to smile and all the muscles on my face i can't see them but they're there and when somebody wants to cry and all the muscles they get into the mood of crying and when he wants to cheer up and he said i'm happy something turns the motion and the actions of all those uh, smile nerves and uh, muscles and i say i'm wonderfully made and look at all the blood that is running and the miles they traverse and they go through all my body and i look at all the, the air i breathe i breathe in the air and the oxygen that is needed is separated and goes from my brain and goes everywhere and the carbon dioxide i don't need that one comes out and i breathe in again and day by day my skin's my skin is changing and day by day i put off the old refuse and then when i eat that food all the junk that is not needed that one passes out smoothly and the other one that remains that made me taller and bigger and more intelligent everything is retained and i say 
I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I look and as I see, I see things around me. I see things beyond me. And as I look up, I not only see the physical, I begin to imagine where I will be in 10 years' time. And then I look at the star and I say, I'm going beyond the sky. Somebody there, you're going beyond the sky. I came to tell you that in any way you consider it, you consider it physically, you consider it psychologically, you consider it physiologically, you consider it naturally, you consider it supernaturally, you are wonderfully and fearfully made. And I want you to realize today, the doctors have been studying the human body, the anatomy. And they've been studying every part of man for ages now. They've been studying, they have not come to the end of understanding all the parts of the body. Because as thousands and millions of those researchers are researching on their single body they have not finished their study they started before we were born and they are still here and they study night and day because you are so deep you are so great and you are incomparable to any other creature on earth you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I came today to explore with you this creation, this person we call an offspring of Adam, a follower of Christ. When we look at the physical, we look at the natural, we look at the spiritual, we put everything together, there is a power that will come into your life today and lift you up fearfully wonderfully made <laughs> you know sometimes if you take a, you know a wristwatch lift it up lift it up lift it up it comes to a point so high you look you cannot see you go beyond any kind of human description and that's what you are going to be that's what you are already i just came to reveal to you what you know already and then will take you from there from known to the unknown you will get to such a point that enemies on earth will not recognize you and the people that are trying to do something stay here stay here stay with us you say no i am going higher who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Raise up that hand. Today, you make a covenant with the Lord that the God of heaven, who has made you so wonderful, who has created you, and he has put everything to be an achiever, and even go beyond an achiever, he's brought everything to your life, you're making a deal, a league, a covenant, an agreement with that God today, and the wonder of your life, and the treasure in your life that has been hidden will come out today. The world will see there is a man inside that young person. There is a woman inside that young person. What others have done, you will do and go beyond. Whatever others have tried to do and they have not been able to do, your day has come. It will happen. To who? I say to who? Just close your eyes. Something goes beyond your sight. And you will become that good, that great, that glorious thing that beyond, that's beyond sight in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you have come to reveal to us what was hidden, what we didn't know about our individual selves that you have so made us you have so created us and you have so impacted our lives that now we will discover what we are made for 
what stuff we have inside us where we're going and lord i pray all that your children need to get to where you have created them for everyone will get there in jesus name and we will naturally normally know that you have put in wonder in every life and that wonder will come out in jesus name lord turn and change everyone to be of a higher species in jesus name confirm it in every life in jesus name we pray and everybody shout amen god bless you you can sit down we're looking at the subject today wonderfully made for excellence there's no doubt as you look at genesis chapter 1 reading from verse 26 genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image let us make man in our image even if you don't know that our image you know that god is talking from heaven and you know that god is making the proposal and he's making the plan it's going to make man woman in his image and he says in our likeness after our likeness and let them have dominion now you know that you know it's like the world is turning around and the world is now having dominion on man you hear that earthquake you hear of that tornado and you hear of that accident and you hear of things happening in the world it's like the world is now having dominion over man but man was created that will have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth and over every 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 creeping thing that creepeth on the earth and then in verse 27 it says so god created man like he said he would how he said he would to the level and the height that he said he would and to the value every value that he said he would so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them created the man in his image created the woman in his image created the boy in his image created the girl in his image created everyone male and female created he them and then in psalm 139 i'm reading from verse 14 psalm 139 verse 14 what god said he will do and what god actually did and then the result that came from the hand of god the psalmist now records for us in psalm 139 verse 14 it says i will praise thee for i ah, look at that not only adam not only eva not only noah not only enoch not them us too he said after thousands of years that the world had existed now they becomes and he says for i i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous at thy works that and that my soul knoweth right well that my soul knoweth right well when you know that you know beyond any shadow of doubt that you sitting there standing there that you are fearfully and wonderfully made then you understand no impossibility in your life anymore no hindrance in your life anymore okay i understand when your teacher is teaching lecturer is lecturing mathematics you don't talk you keep quiet you only write write and write but you know the preacher is different he's not teaching chemistry he's not teaching physics it's not not now not now at least it's not teaching math he's teaching about you and talking about you and when i say things that will lift you up to the sky you shout amen, amen. 
Now, he knows, he knows that even though it's not Adam, it's not Eve, it's not any of these people, he is living now more than 2,000 years after creation. And then he says, I, 2,000 years beyond the time of Adam and Eve, I am wonderfully and I'm fearfully made marvelous at thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. What you know today will lift you up. What you know today will change your direction in life. What you know today will put you on top in Jesus' name. Yes, I understand. Some of us are already on top. And I, you know, rejoice and identify with that uh, young daughter who came on top in Delta and came on top in the zone and came on top in Nigeria and came on top in Africa. Now, stay there. You are going to go higher than you have been. And so, as we declare that we, have been wonderfully made and fearfully made in Job chapter 33 I'm looking at verse 4 in Job chapter 33 the spirit of God has made me what I want you to notice here is this person talking at the time of Job far away from the time of Genesis there are people that believe that God God was personally involved in creating Adam and Eve, but he led the rest to the hands of the men and the women, and whatever comes out now is their decision, parental decision. What comes out now is the family decision, and they say, yes, he created Adam and Eve, and they were wonderfully made, but here we are in Job, and many Many years have passed on and now he says the spirit of God has made me and the breath of the almighty has given me life and so you know this is not just for Adam and this is not just for Eve this is for you this is for this is for that wonder will come out for the world to see. There are three things I'm looking at in this. What should I call it? Should I call it a message? Should I call it enlightenment? And should I call it education? Should I call it edification? Whatever we call it, three things coming out. And the three things coming out, write the word form formed f-o-r-m then an e-d to show that it's been done formed right the next word formed but put a d-e behind that formed number one formed number two deformed number three still write the word formed but put a trance behind it a trance is when you cross over like transport you cross over from one place to the other like translation you cross over from one language to the other like uh, transcendental you come over from what place and from one level to another now we're going to write the word form and then we put a trans before it transformed three things we're looking at formed deformed transformed number one formed by the inspiration of the creator formed by the inspiration of the creator now we'll come to number two after god had made the creation and formed we now come to number two deformed by inventions of corruption inventions of corruption we came formed by the lord wonderfully 
and fearfully. And now the next stage, the world around us, they begin to tamper with the creation of God, deformed by inventions of corruption. Number three, God says he will not allow the world to take you over from him. What he intended originally, when he formed you, he said he will not allow anyone to deform his work. And so he says, come now, the way you are. I know what you are doing. I know where you are. Come now and be transformed by the intervention of Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. And so formed by the inspiration of the creator. Number two, deformed by the inventions of corruption. And number three, transformed by the intervention of Christ. We're coming to number one there. Number one there is formed, formed, formed by the inspiration of God. If we had remained like that, if no fallen angel had affected us, if no evil spirit had affected us, if no human being, depraved human being, had left us alone so that they mind their business and we live our lives, we would remain like we have been created by God, formed by the inspiration of God. Look at Genesis chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 7. We're searching for for the word formed by the inspiration of God in um, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 it says and the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the earth of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul it says God formed the man have you looked at the formation of God at your fingers we have five we don't need more than five anything we want to do these fingers will be hold something pick something throw something whatever five you know have you looked at your arms? Two of them. We don't need three. And the Lord has formed us perfectly as in all we need. Have you looked at your feet? Only two. And these two, they are enough. And they run anywhere. Once we train those legs, they can do anything. Have you looked at your eyes? Only two. And they are enough. Have you looked at your nostrils? Only two. Have you looked at your ears? The Lord formed man. He knew all the connections there ought to be in the body. And then he put the spirit there. He breathed unto the man. And he became a living soul. And then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, And the Lord God planted the garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man. And there he puts the man. And since that time, when God creates anyone and makes anyone and you are born, he puts you where you ought to be. And where you ought to be, you will do good there. Amen. You don't need to run here, run there, run here, just get Where the Lord has put you, you will excel there. Your excellence will meet you there. Your provision will meet you there. Everything you need, everything will be there in Jesus' name. Now, I'm not saying that somebody cannot travel from here to there, from there to there, but I've seen, I have seen personally, the people who left where God put them. And then they start from scratch again. And then they are trying, they are trying. When they look back, the rest of us who are staying where God put us, they shake their heads. They say, if I had known, you will not regret. He made us, and as he has made us, he has put us where we are. Isaiah chapter 43, and I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. He says, even everyone that is called by my name for i have created him for my glory look at this i have formed 
him. I'm just trying to emphasize to you that it is not only Adam, or not only Eve, that was formed by God. He said, I have formed him, everyone that is called by my name. He says, yea, yes, I have made him. The Lord uses those two words, made, transformed, as synonyms. Meaning the same thing. I made him. I formed him. I created him. The same thing. Look at verse 21. Now, in verse 21, these people, look at the word here now, have I formed for myself. These people have I formed for myself. You know, Satan is a thief. And Jesus said, the thief cometh to steal to kill, to destroy what God has formed for himself. Satan wants to hijack. He wants to steal. He wants to take you for himself. God forbid. God forbid. He will not have you. He will not have me. He will not take you formed for God, for himself, and then keep you for himself. And then he says something. He says, they shall show forth my praise. He says, I formed them. I created them. That in every act they have, in every life they live, in every profession they find themselves, in every college or educational institution they find themselves, they, all the people I have formed, will show forth my praise. I will see the praise of God in your academics. I'll see the glory of God in your profession as we're growing up and going on and we look at, no matter who's looking at you, you'll see the praise of God in your life in Jesus' name. Now we're looking at um, Isaiah chapter, one, chapter 49 and we're reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 5. It says, and now says the Lord that formed me. He understands. You see, everybody, when God enlightens you, then you understand. I'm not just here. He formed me. And then he said, that formed me from the womb. And then he says, as a, as a servant, to bring Jacob again to him. And then it says, Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall be, they shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. And my God shall be my strength. Everyone think about Adam. When he created Adam and formed him from the dust, he breathed unto him the breath of life. And then Adam, Eve, they became living souls. Now, the same, he forms us. And as he has formed us, he has created us, he has made us, and he brings strength into us. And I speak to you now, you're weak, you're feeble, you're sick, you're tired. You're weary. It's like I can't move on anymore. I send the strength of the Spirit of God into your life in Jesus' name. Then look at, look at Jeremiah chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 5. It says to him, it says, before I formed thee. It's not talking about Adam. It's talking about Jeremiah. That tells you then, every one of us, we can say, he formed me. Can you say that? Can you say that again? Say that with conviction. You know, I heard of, you know, some young people, actually teenagers, they just entered this class. 
And this teacher was new to them, and they were new to the teachers. And uh, so he said, now you children, he called them children, students, um, introduce yourself, tell me your name, where you are from, and what you think you are going to get out of this institution. And then one day of them stood up and said, I am Jackie or whatever, and uh, I came from here, from there, and uh, our families, they don't generally understand stand or study science but here I am I don't know what will happen okay thank you and then another one stood up and said I am Martha and uh, we came from rural areas and this is my first year in a city and I'm trying to adjust I'm trying to see what will happen and then another one stood up and he said I am John and the way he said it, the teacher squared up because the way he spoke, the teacher knew that something was coming. He said, I am John. I'm no dummy. I'm not stupid. I'm bright. I'm great. Everything you teach, I'm going to catch. And I'm going to make distinction out of this place. Why? Because God made me. And he doesn't make dummies. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God made you and he doesn't make zero he doesn't make dummy am I having an amen yeah. and the Lord will show you he will reveal to you and because he made you because he formed you something great unexpected will come out of you yeah. he says from, your bed, from the mother's belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth from the womb, I sanctified and set thee apart, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. What Jeremiah did not know, God knew and God told him. And what you do not know about yourself, that he has formed you, and he created you by the inspiration of the creator. What you didn't know, the Lord will tell you today. And as he tells you today, then you understand that you are going to be what God has created you to be. Made for excellence. Made for excellence. How about that? Excellence. E is eternity. God told Jeremiah, before you were born, in eternity, when you didn't know you were coming to the earth, I pictured you. I had your portrait and I made you from eternity. Understand, the Lord had had thinking, thought, plan, proposal for you before you were born. Made from eternity. And then the next word there, the next letter there, X, excellence. Excellence. That's what you are made for. If you're deviating here and there, going yonder and going to the other side, you'll come back and the Lord will bring you back to excellence. And then see there is for contribution. Contribution. What does that mean? Every creature on earth contribute something to the progress of the earth. Look at the ants, they're contributing something. Look at the fish, they're contributing something. Look at the sun, it's contributing something. Look at the moon, it's contributing something. Even things you don't know that the moon is contributing, all the creatures of God are contributing and now you were created by God you will contribute to the progress of this earth before you go your life will not be somebody that just walked on the sand and then we can't see your mark or a bird flying in the sky and we cannot see the past that the bird has flown through you are going to be a contributor you might contribute to the joy of other people to strengthen other people you might contribute like a doctor who is treating other people like an engineer who is building roads and building 
building bridges, like a nurse is attending to those who are sick, and like a caretaker, a carers who are taking care of old people. Whatever it is, the Lord has called you to do, you will contribute in Jesus' name. And so you are asking yourself, as God has made me for excellence, am I, do I still have the consciousness from eternity before I was born? I was created from eternity. Do I have, you understand, I'm, I'm created for excellence, I'm created for contribution, I am created for engagement, engagement, engagement. You have to engage in something. Don't say this is small. The ant doesn't say this is small. It carries that little bit and goes and goes the direction the Lord has mapped out you go to and that one comes and that one comes and we all, we all engage and then we build the world like he wants to build the church like he wants to build a community like he wants because we're created for engagement now the um, next letter there what's the next letter there L were created for his likeness, his likeness, his image that will be like him, that will talk like him, that will walk like him, that will think like him, his likeness that God will like what comes out of our lives. And they, I'm doing this, and what have I done today? Okay, I've gone here, I've gone there. What have I done? I put some imprint of my life today. Yes, I put some imprint there. And when God looks at everything you're putting your hand on, you're putting your life into, the Lord will like you. Well, like what you do. Uh, there will be no demarcation or frown between you and the Lord. And then uh, you show his nature and you show his likeness. And the next L there is love. Somebody shout love. love. Say it as if you meant it. Mean it. Love. love. You will love. See how God loves. Frowning? No. Smiling. Happy. And making everybody that looks at him happy. You'll not go through life as if you are carrying a heavy load on your back. Can you love the people as you love God? I don't have time. I'm carrying a great load. I'm carrying a big load. I don't know what I'm God is going to become of me. Cheer up, cheer up. The love of God will hold you up. And as you love, love is like, you know, like a mirror. You, you, you stand at the mirror, and if you frown, the image at the mirror will frown. If you act furious, the image in the mirror will act furious. If you act tensed, as if, you know, you can, all your nerves and everything, they're on edge. The one in the mirror will also behave like that because it's your image there. But when you ease up and you love and you relax and you are cheerful, the one in the mirror will also have the same action. What I'm saying is, if you go through life frowning, all the people that see you, they will meet you with frowning. If you go through life, angry, anxious, furious, everyone in the world, that's how they will act to you and you cannot enter any door, you cannot go anywhere because you are an angry man, angry woman, turn it around, love, when you show love, love will come back to you in multiplied fold in Jesus name, we are created and made for love. Not for frowning, not for anger, not for fighting, not for hurting other people. And the next word there is edification. To edify is to charge other people, to motivate other people, to inspire other people by your action by your studies, by your achievement, by everything you have, you are edifying the rest of the people there were made and were formed for edification and then were made for needfulness.
Needfulness. Needfulness. You know, sometimes you are, if you are absent from class, everybody is wondering, where is he? Where is she? Why? Because they need you. And the teacher, for him to teach very well, it is asking, where is this boy? Where is this girl? Why? Because the teacher even needs you. And everybody, when you're acting live, and you're not acting like a scrap of paper, Every, anybody can dump that. That one is not just, that one is not needful. When he was there, what was he doing? And when she was there, what was she contributing? But when you live a life that shows that you are formed to represent God here and you are needed and you know you are needed even when you don't want to go out to say I have to because I'm needed there I don't want to go to class but I will go because I'm needed there I don't want to go to the market but I will go because the people who will not buy from any other person they're good looking for me I must be there I don't want to go and teach in the class today but I will go because I am needed, needful. We're made for needfulness and then we're made for cooperation. Cooperation. The way the Lord has made us, one hand alone, exterior, skillful, cannot do it all. He cannot tell the other hand, go to pieces, I don't need you. We're made for cooperation. We cannot walk straight and walk long without the two legs cooperating together were made for cooperation we cannot you know live a peaceful life without cooperating in our language what we say what the other person were made for cooperation and so we're not made for competition we're not made for criticizing we're not made for cutting down other people were made for cooperation and then were made for endless existence you will live forever in heaven because that's why god created us he wanted to have men and women boys and girls that when they finish here they will just change accommodation and they will leave their accommodation on earth and go to their accommodation in heaven because we everyone because we you because we everyone that comes to christ because we are made for endless existence on the other hand those who do not have the nature of Christ in them, and they do not have the salvation of God with them, and they do not have the life, the life and the likeness of God with them. When they live here, they're still going to go to a great beyond because everyone is made for endless existence. The only problem is, the only pain is, the only challenge is they will live in hell fire far away from the Lord, not in the presence of the Lord, and that existence of the sinner, of the one who goes the wrong direction and did not repent and turn to the Lord and become born again, he will still be in endless existence in hell fire forever. But those of us who know that we are formed we're made and we are created for excellence endless existence with the lord forever and ever in jesus name amen. let me hear the amen. amen let heaven hear the amen. amen now that's number one number two now as we came into this world we were formed by god and now the world sees us. A new person has come. A new inhabitant has come. A new friend has come. And every bad thing they have learned before you came, before you were born, they want to teach you that. You say, I'm going to school already. They said, This one, that one is formal school. This one is an informal school. And so they begin to teach you all those things. And those things they teach you, you are deformed by 
inventions of corruption. You're deformed. Your life deformed. Your brain deformed. Your thoughts deformed. Your actions deformed. Your character deformed. Where did you learn that? Many of the things people do, they don't even use the maths we're taught in class. They don't use the physics we're taught. They don't use the history, the geography we're taught. They don't use the civic knowledge they are taught. They only use the knowledge they have that deforms them here on earth. Number two, deformed by inventions of corruption. I want you to look at Ecclesia, Ecclesiastics chapter 7 and I'm reading from verse 29. Take note of this. It says lo, this only have I found that God has made man upright. That goes back to point number one. He formed us for excellence, but he says now, but they have brought, have sought out many, tell me, inventions. Many inventions. The inventions that were not there when God made, formed, created us, they sought out many inventions. When it says invention, what are those things? I'm going to spell it for you. I is idleness. Idleness. And the devil finds work for an idle hand, an idle mind. Have you know when, when you're working and you have a sum, you have a problem, you're trying to solve a mass, you don't have all those uh, extraneous and evil thoughts. They can't come in because you're occupied. You're, you're busy tra- uh, saying this. What's the axiom? What's the theorem? And what do I get from that? How do I make use of that? Am I going to use Pythagoras' theorem? Am I going to use this or that? Why you're doing all that? Because you are not idle, all those evil things will not come in. And what brings those inventions that deform us? One, idleness. And then and there is negligence. When we neglect that, you know, we have to read that book. We have to go to that office. We have to deal with that file. We have to attend to that person. And we we'll just neglect everything. And sooner or later, you'll forget. You'll forget that this is part of the reason you are here on earth. Inventions. They sought out many inventions. And the V there, vanities. We go to vanity. Vanity here in a language. Vanity in addressing vanity in our interaction especially boys and girls men and women vanities and vanity of vanities all is vanity and those vanities they corrupt us and they make our lives vain and then the next word there is envy because we are not working, others are working. They are getting promotion, we are still staying in that same old, dumb place. And because we are negligent, all the other people that are active and they are moving on, they are achieving this and they are achieving that, and then we are behind. And the only thing we can do is envy, envy, envy them. And then we are think, thinking how to bring them down, to clamp them down. Envy. Those are the things that those worldly inventions bring but the Lord will set you free and then uh, there is in their numbness numbness uh, numbness you understand uh, what you can't even feel any feeling uh, in your hand that, that's what happens to the people that have leprosy they have leprosy and so all the feelings in their hand all the feelings in their toes everything wears off and so they can uh, try to open something by force and they'll not feel the pain in their hand and they do a lot of things that 
that numbness has come in and there's no feeling there's no conscience there's no pain and their lives go from bad to worse and i pray the lord will deliver you and set you free in jesus name and then of course chief there is for transgression transgression when god created adam and eve they didn't know about you know inventing something that is bad something that will kill another fellow something that will spoil another person's life all they could think about was what god will think about the love and the help and the compre compre uh, comprehension and everything that we ought to do but now transgression has come in and in that transgression they do something is there nobody to correct them is there nobody to put them right is there nobody to say come on here i'm older than you are i've been here before you came to this world if we go in this direction is the path of perdition is the path of punishment and it's a path of never do well and then they say no i there is incorrigibility incorrigibility is coming from the word incorrigible and it means cannot be corrected and it's just a kind of adamant and evil what i did i am doing what i'm doing i'll keep on doing incorrigibility that's what deforms our lives and i pray that your life will come the right side up right side up and all those things inventions that are destroying our lives idleness negligence vanities envy numbness transgression and incorrigibility i pray the lord will wipe them out he formed us at the beginning he will reform us again it will transform us again it will turn our lives the right direction again in jesus name are, are you writing down what i'm what i'm telling you and do you know that these are the things that people invent inventions of corruption that spoil our lives yes or no yes, yes. and now the next word is oh it is occultism 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 it's like uh, uh, they're saying uh, now nah, you're a young boy a young lady a young man you understand that you have followed the god of your fathers you have followed the god of the bible and then you obey 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 the word of god now be a guy and be smart and be a guy and be courageous and be fearless and there's something that will make you fearless there's something that whatever you do anybody everybody they'll be afraid of you and nobody will touch you or correct you anymore and you say what's that what's that they say well it will be a big word to you they say it's occultism there's a hidden power somewhere and if you join you but you'll go through initiation you'll go through kind of modification you'll go through some rituals and then you'll have some it may be painful a little bit but you know you are heading for something great that you will be a fearless creature here on earth and you thought it was a good thing and then you go in there you're in occultism already you're a gang already and already your life is now hooked with satan you see them in the dream you see them in the day they will send messages by occultic power an occultic information sender other people will not know you will see them when other people are not seeing them now you are hooked in that's occultism but the lord will break the yoke from your life today he'll set you free and all these all these inventions that have brought corruption and is bringing you down today you are delivered in jesus name and look at the next word there in the night club in the night club they say leave your brain behind come in here leave your intelligence behind 
Come here. Leave your thinking of consequence that this will spoil my life. If you are thinking like that, you're not coming to this nightclub. But leave all that behind. Deem the light. So that, you know, the people there will feel at ease. Nobody is seeing them. And they can do what they have never done before. They get into those nightclubs. And when you get in there, that is part of what will bring inventions or corruption in your life. Yes, there are many things, you know, that forms that we can call that is but the summary of it all, sin, sin, and you are immersed in it, sin, it surrounds you, sin, it enters your brain, sin, it seizes your thinking and understanding, sin, it rolls in your blood, sin, if you become addicted to it, sin, and when those inventions of corruption are come into your life, the man is finished, and I pray you will not be finished. Yeah. We're starting from today. And we're going to climb a new ladder. We're starting from today. And we're going to go a new direction. We're starting today. And that one of the past deformed by the inventions of corruption is going to die today. And then you come alive. I'm talking to somebody there. I'm talking to somebody there. You come alive in Jesus' name. Come back before I leave that point. You come back to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Lo, this only have I found that God has made the man, the woman, the boy, the girl upright. But they have sought out many inventions and i pray that those inventions that destroy us that spoil our lives everything will vanish away today i see a new man there i see a new woman there i see somebody who has been looking down i see you looking up and i see you seeing the, the vision of the future and then you say i've never i've not been using this word for a long time now great i'm going to be great Glorious, I'm going to be glorious and gracious. The grace of God is going to fill your life in Jesus' name. Give me an amen that will lift you up. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at, you remember the word, the stem, the stem word is formed. And now we join trans to that stem word. And now you have transformed by the intervention of Christ. The Lord will intervene in your life today. You will not remain the same everything you have struggled with i want to drop that i want to drop that you couldn't the lord himself will walk out his glory in your life in jesus name and the original plan of god will come back that you are made and formed for excellence that excellence will come in jesus name i want to come to number three now transformed by the intervention of christ we're looking at romans chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 1 it says i beseech you i beg of you i plead with you and it says therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. You know, if uh, the doctor is going to work on you and is going to operate and take away the thing that is uh, eating you up, destroying your life, you have to present yourself to him. You have to go to him. You have to go to her. And then you have to release yourself so that the doctor, the nurse, or whoever they are can do the work. And I pray that you surrender to Christ like that today in Jesus' name. And and it says to present her bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world. Why? They destroyed us. 
They derailed us. Why? Because they deformed us. The things that injured us, that injured us, that took away our brain, that took away our mind, that made us foolish, senseless, silly. Are we going to surrender to that again? Enough is enough. I said enough is enough. It says now that we are we be transformed. That's the word right there. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. That he may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God will come into your life. What's the perfect will of God that you are healed and you stay healthy? What's the perfect will of God that you are saved, you are righteous? What's the perfect will of God that you are the favorite of heaven? What's the perfect will of God that every prayer you pray, he will answer? What's the perfect will of God that your desires will be fulfilled here on earth? What's the perfect will of God that your mommy will be happy over your life? What's the perfect will of God? Even I, the preacher, your pastor, your father, and the Lord, everything that is coming and new in your life, I'll be happy for you in Jesus' name. And the goodness of God will follow you. You'll be rising higher and higher. And here I am at the clapping corner. I'm saying, I'm watching you keep on rising. I'm watching you keep on going. I'm watching you keep on growing. I say, don't stop yet. Don't stop yet. I know you have achieved this. You have achieved this. You have achieved that. And I'm saying, here am I in the motivational, inspirational corner here. Keep on riding. And you're right to the top in Jesus' name. That's what the Lord will do. He says that we're renewed in our mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How is this going to happen? It's going to happen by the intervention of Christ. By the intervention of Christ. What's intervention? I, there is imputation. Imputation means what you didn't have, the Lord will impute it to your record free of charge. You didn't have righteousness. You say, Lord, righteousness is missing in my life. And then he says, come on here. And as you come to Christ, he will impute his righteousness into you in Jesus' name. And then in that intervention, it's his name. He said, whatsoever you ask him, my name is name. It's what will bring that intervention unto you, the name of the Lord. He says, that shall bring forth a child, and that shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins and then anything you ask in the name the success you ask the victory you ask and the healing you ask and the, the, the dominion you ask he will give it to you in that name Amen. And then she there is his teaching. His teaching. You know, he teaches us to succeed, not to fail. He teaches us to make it not to be defeated. And his teaching will come to you. And as his teaching comes to you, you will go up in Jesus' name. He there is empowerment. Empowerment. It will give you power. Amen. Amen. Power. Somebody shout power. power. He says, behold, I give unto you power. He will not give you weakness. You know, what kind of savior will that be? If when you are before a temptation, he withdraws his power and he gives you weakness. When you are before Satan, then he withdraws his power and gives you weakness. Uh -uh. You will not be weak before Satan. You'll not be weak before sickness. You'll not be weak before any challenge in your life. In Jesus' name. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. How much of the power of the enemy are you going to tread on? 
how much of the power of the enemy are you going to overcome? Is fulfilled in your life. And then he says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Amen. When he says that, nothing shall by any means hurt me. What does he mean by that? When I need to read, understand, nothing will hurt my brain. When I need to see very clearly, and I need to see the path before me, and discern, and differentiate between this and that, nothing will hurt my eyes. When I need to hear the instruction that will say, do this, do this, do this. This one is optional. This one is optional. Pick one of the three optionals and do that. When I need to hear instruction, nothing will hurt my ears. And nothing will hurt my progress. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Intervention of Christ. Imputation. The name of the teaching, the empowerment, and then the redemption that, that he has given us. He redeems us from the curse of the Lord. Every curse broken in your life. They say, they say, they say, our family members never go beyond the age of 40. They say it's a curse on our family. That curse is removed out of you. Yeah. And they say that, you know, when you go to the doctor, they give you a form to feel. They want to know, do you still have your father alive? If you say no, okay, what killed your father? They say about your mother, what's the challenge, health challenge of your mother? Your siblings, what do you see? They have not even examined you. They see it on your form. Okay, they say, this killed daddy, and this killed mommy, and this killed brother, and this killed sister, and you are here. Now, what do you want me to tell you? Then they say, this is likely to heal you, to kill, to kill you. I reject that in Jesus' name. I reject that for you because we're redeemed by Christ and has redeemed us from the curse of the law and every curse is broken out of your life in Jesus name be there is virtue because Christ had virtue and he said he perceived the virtue was gone out of him as we come now the virtue of Christ replenished always there that virtue will come in your life in Jesus name if there is enablement he enabled me he enables us he enables you and from now on all the enablement you need will be granted unto you in jesus name and then end is nailing it to the cross all your shame he gathered that together all your suffering all your punishment and he nailed that to the cross and that thing will never come back into your life in jesus name till there is for triumph Somebody there will triumph. Yeah. Over every challenge, they'll triumph. Because of Christ, because of what he has done, because he's present with you, he'll make you triumph. I endure him, endure him. The Father said, I'll come and dwell with them. And Christ, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in and sup and dwell with him. If anyone loves me and loves my commandment, I and the Father will come into him and dwell with him. The Lord will dwell with you. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Anytime you go through any challenge, any tunnel, understand there's light at the end of that tunnel. And the Lord who dwells with you will abide with you forever in Jesus' name. Oh, is oppression. He will not preach on you. I said he'll operate on you. The operation of the Spirit, the operation of Christ, will work wonders in your life in Jesus' name. And now, now,
He gives us the gift of a new nature. A new nature. Somebody shout a new nature. Somebody shout a new nature. And as you as we round up now, and you stand up there, before you sit down again, something will happen bef between the standing up and the sitting down. Yeah. Between the prayer and the final amen, something will happen. Yeah. A new nature will come unto you. Yeah. The nature that does well. The nature that thinks well. The nature that moves well. And the nature that goes to the right place at the right time for the right purpose. To have the goodness of God in your life. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the intervention of Christ. Welcome to the power of Christ and man. Welcome to the success and what you are going to have now. Welcome to the original plan and purpose of God formed for excellence. What is he? What is she? The Lord accomplished it in our lives today in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now. Rise up now and let the Lord hear you that you understand you are formed by him by the inspiration of the creator although you are deformed by the corruption of the world now you can come and receive from him all those corruptions confess them throw them out vomit them out separate from them Repent, turn, and believe in the Lord who has come to give you new life and new nature. Open your mouth and pray. Don't just sit down there or stand up there. Say, Lord, here am I. I receive. I repent. I turn around. I believe in you. And I know those corruptions will not follow me after this prayer. Between the standing up and sitting down later, you, done, you would have done your operation in my life even now. He will do it. He will do it as a God that cannot fail. He remembers his original intention in forming you. Say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. I come by faith. I come believing. I come trusting. And the Lord will do that work of transformation. Impute in part that righteousness, your own righteousness, so that my life now be upright, straightforward. Grant me the power in that name. I receive your teaching. I believe your teaching. I am empowered. I am empowered. No power of darkness, no power of evil will turn my life upside down anymore. Redeemed from the curse of the law. From the curse of the territory. From the curse of the surrounding. From the curse of the tribe. Redeemed from the curse. Virtue flowing from Christ coming from Christ, coming through Christ, and coming unto you. Enablement. That's what God has created you for. He enables you to do, to achieve, and you'll make it triumph. Thanks be unto God that always gives us the triumph in Christ. The indwelling, he dwells with me. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth, dwelleth in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me oppression. Your praise in your heart, your mind your life and it takes away that evil sin that pins people down and he raises you up with his resurrection power 
and now you have the new nature in Christ. Accept it. It's a gift. Now you possess the new nature in Christ. Believe it. It's a gift that he gives. And it is unto you according to your faith. Amen. I receive. I, receive. I, believe. I believe. Life will not be the same anymore. Yeah. It's of that hand. The glory of God will shine upon your life. The grace of God will be sufficient in your life. And the goodness of God will never stop in your life. When you turn to the right, when you turn to the left, when you are moving in front, and when you have to go somewhere, God, in his everlasting power and strength, will follow you through in Jesus' name. From school to college, to university, to your service, to after your service, to professional life, goodness and mercy will follow you. All the days of your life. And if Jesus tarries and you live old, 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 and then you are called to glory, angels will be standing at attention to welcome you. And then forever and ever, you'll be with the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you for this hour. Thank you because you formed us. Even though the world deformed us, you have come to transform us. And we're asking you, Lord, for everyone here, young and older. Lord, I'm asking that your transforming power and spirit and savior, redeemer, will work on every life in Jesus' name. And we're praying, oh Lord, all those dark things of the past, all the weaknesses of the past, all the failure of the past, we leave them behind and we go forth in the strength of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. New life, Amen. salvation, Amen. forgiveness, Amen. freedom, Amen. an open heart, Amen. peace with God, and victory over our past life. Grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, Lord, power, strength, triumph, Amen. transformation, Amen. achievement, Amen. excellence Amen. will follow everyone from now on. Amen. Lord, take the word impossibility from every mouth Amen. and make their lives a life of possibility, Amen. a life of growing, a life of moving up, a life of seeing Every impossibility become possible in Jesus' name. Lord, turn every brother, brother Victor. Every sister, sister Victoria. Men, women, boys, girls, achievement in every life. It is done. We shall see it. We shall rejoice with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Confirmation in every life. In Jesus' name.